In this mini tutorial we're going to look at the use of procedures and functions in C Sharp. Okay, the uh, purpose of procedures and functions is to allow code to be self-contained. Uh, procedures and functions promote the use of local variables rather than having to use global variables and it means that each procedure or function could be tested independently so it can aid with debugging and it can also aid the readability of code because each procedure and function is designed for its own purpose. The differences between them, a function always returns a value and a function is always called on the right hand side of an assignment statement. So that is why it returns a value. Because if we've got an assignment statement, obviously it needs a return value. In C Sharp, the structure of a function and procedure look very similar. And the subtle difference is that the function has a return command in there. Procedures may or may not return a value and they could return many values and this makes a procedure useful if you have multiple values that you want one of your procedures to return. An example is if you um, you might have a function that turns returns the binary version of a deanery number so it's a function because it's returning one value you pass it the deanery number and it returns the binary and the self-contained aspect is that it does all the processing within that. Uh, you could have another procedure and within the procedure there may be um, you may send it uh, four values and it returns the two largest values so the purpose is to look through all four find out which two are the biggest and returns both and that would be a procedure because you're returning more than one value. You usually break your program up by task. So for instance, um, if I was creating quite a simple program, I might have a console right line, I might put a menu system in place. Um, okay, and I could say one is gonna be um, input a number And number two, maybe output number, something like that. So that could be a menu. I could bring in an integer choice. I could then have my choice equals um, bring it in from the console. I've had to parse that because that brings that in as a string. That's converted into an integer. Two ways of doing that. We can have convert to int um, or parse, either of the two. And then we might have an if statement. Let's say if choice is one, then we'll do something um, such as Enter that in. Obviously, if this is going to be a number, I want to parse that again. If it is a whole number. Okay. Um, we could uh, continue to loop this. Do. Um, num is not equal to zero. Okay. Assign that. Okay, I forgot to initialize the variable there. Okay, so this is all in our main sub procedure. Uh, this is a very, very small program, but it works better to break it up into different tasks, e.g., the menu, displaying the menu, could be grouped together into a procedure. It's a procedure because it wouldn't need to return a value, it's only displaying something. So I could sort that as a public static void menu. I don't need 
anything returning. I don't need to send it anything. Basically this code can just be taken into that menu. That is then self-contained. That procedure can be looked at independently. That's how I structure that. So in my actual main procedure I could just make a call to it and that is my procedure call and that line that jumps off to here and it runs that bit of line and it comes back again it means if I wanted to I could run that twice and I'll just show you that when it loads there we go it's got the menu twice and that's because I made two calls to it okay likewise I could say I would like to take this part and put that in a procedure so I could say I've got a procedure well, actually I'm gonna have this as a function because it's gonna return a value so I'm gonna have a public Okay, so I've typed that in there, look, we've got a public static int because it's returning an integer, it's not void, void is it's not returning any values, this is the data type that I'm returning, a single integer. Notice my return line, that makes it a function, and within there I've declared a new variable, int, entered num, I've initialized that with zero, and I've asked the user, enter a number, and I'm getting the user to enter it, and I'm returning that. So if I'm returning it, remember a function always appears on the right hand side of an assignment statement. So originally, in this if statement up here, I had num equals console read line, and instead I could have num equals the name of my function, input val. And therefore at that point, it goes off and it executes this function, and it brings it back again. neither of these have used parameters but that gives you an idea of both, both a procedure and a function and how we've taken this program and we've broken it down now within this we could have some try and catches we could have a validation to say that the numbers between a certain range and so this could be expanded this is just for demonstration purposes of how we can code a procedure and a function call and how they are called differently. A function is on the right hand side of that assignment statement, that equal sign. A procedure is just called. This returns one single value, that returns none. Thank you for watching.